Hey guys, what's up? Let me know if you can hear me. You should be able to hear me okay. Um, we have an exciting day today. Uh, there's a laser behind me. And it's, uh, <clears throat> for the first time ever, um, not in a crate. Uh, we have a laser not in a crate. It actually came in a cardboard box. It is the EM Smart uh, Basic 2R, which is like their second generation one. It's the most advanced EM Smart laser that they sell. I'm rolling my sleeves up because we're about to put a freaking laser together. Uh, and they named it the Basic, which is kind of weird. Um, we'll look at it on paper. We're going to put it together. Uh, and then hopefully we'll be able to test it out. Um, I'll have to free up a USB port. We'll get to that. I've done literally nothing. So we're starting absolutely from scratch. Uh, and we're going to hopefully be marking by the end of this live stream. I don't know how long it's going to take. Um, I opened the box for like two seconds. And then I was like, oh my god, I have to put it together. And I closed the box. So um, literally starting from scratch. Uh, so... The first thing we have to do is put a table together. <laughs> um, I don't have enough table space. I don't have enough like desk space in this office um, to actually like put this laser on. So Miranda uh, was a doll and ran out to Target for me today to pick up this little like folding table thing. So we're gonna put this together first. Should be should be big enough. It's literally just big enough to hold one laser. This thing is tiny. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen the EM Smarts before. Uh, they're they're very very small, so I'm not really worried about fitting it on this table. But we'll see how it fits, but I, I'm not super concerned about it. So um, step one, put something together to you know put the laser on. I wanted to do this in advance, but um, I've been with the baby all day. It's been kind of a baby day, so uh, like literally it's the first time I'm sitting down and getting anything done today. Uh, so hopefully this is pretty quick and painless it should be it doesn't look like it needs to do really anything except unfold we just need to get it you know out of the plastic and we will officially start our garbage pile over there all right oh okay gosh it's very small um oh it has like little brackets okay come on you can't be doing this while we're putting the laser on you i think it'll pop in with enough force hold on there we go okay all right laser table that's convenient working out so far. So far we're in good shape. That was the best unboxing yet. Great stream. Thanks for coming guys. Uh, have a great night and I'll see you in the next one. Just kidding. Let me go get the box. Alright. So here's the box that comes in. Um, just in case you were wondering you cannot get this wet. Uh, don't step on it. It's fragile and this side up. So um, I think we avoided all of those things getting it to the office. So we should be in good shape to open it up. I don't have like a cool overhead camera mounted in here yet. So I'll try to show you guys things as I open them. Um, but go ahead and pop this back open. I did tape it back up after I opened it just to make it fun, just to keep things you know, YouTube-y. Also probably smart for transporting it. Last thing we need is it falling out. I feel like I'm going to be standing a lot this episode. It kind of sucks. Alright, here we go. So, we're going to open it up. And what do we see inside? Uh, cover. So we'll get rid of that. And a warranty card. Um, they warned me about this. They, she was like, Eins, he, her, I think it's a she, uh, sent me 
a message on WhatsApp and was like, hey, just so you know, these aren't parts for the laser. We're literally just throwing some things in a bag to keep it heavy enough to decrease the shipping cost, I guess, if they get it over a certain weight, it's cheaper. Uh, so, junk. They sent me some DSLR lens tissues. Uh, here is the rotary. So, the EM Smart Basic, uh, again, this is the basic model. So, this is like the second generation one. Comes in a R and a non R version. R stands for rotary. Uh, the non R version does not have the rotary hookups. So, here's a little rotary tool. It's small, uh, it does not look big enough to do a tumbler with. Not that we're going to be putting a tumbler in this tiny little thing anyway, but um, you know, we'll get to it. Uh, more foam. And here's the base unit here. So um, I know you guys can't see it super well, but that's kind of the overhead. So from what we can see right now, we can see the fiber optic cable. We've got the base unit. And up there we have the laser path and galvo head. So um, the towers are probably what's in this box. If we get this open, I'm, I'm guessing there's a tower in here. I feel like the laser path is the thing that, ooh, that doesn't sound like a tower. That sounds like loose items. Hey, look, my name's on it. Alexander. That's nice. How much is this model? Uh, it was between $24 and $2,600 for this model. Um, I, I haven't actually, like, looked super well because um, there were, like, a bunch of different models, and I had to ask them a bunch of times which model they actually sent me. Uh, I wasn't sure which one they had actually sent because they all look the same. So we did some back and forth, and by the time... Um, wow, okay. Uh, by the time it had arrived, I was just getting my answer. So they sent some materials to mark on. So this is, like, a little tiny thermos, uh, a stainless steel flask. I think we've all seen this box before. <laughs> Uh, that is like a every engraver knows knows this box. Uh, so a uh, flask, little thermos guy. Uh, there is a like bangle of sorts, like a bracelet. Uh, another bracelet. These feel like just metal plates. Uh, so cool. So thank you. Uh, they sent us some material we can actually like test on. I thought we were just going to be stuck with aluminum cards. Uh, this looks like leather. The leather wallet. Uh, ooh, they actually sent a couple coins. Uh, there's actually a couple coins in that bag, so that's kind of cool. Another bracelet. Another undescribed random piece of metal. This feels like a ridge wallet knockoff, maybe, and a dog tag and some other little things. Let's see. Really curious. I'll see what's in here. What's up, David? How's it going, man? Uh, nope, these are just metal business cards. Though they seem nice. Uh, they seem like like good little metal business cards. Uh, so that's fine. Um, let's try to get the obvious trash off the desk because the desk is going to fill up very quickly. And then we will come back and look at these things once we uh, once we're sorted with the laser here. Just throw that in the pile. So, I'm not convinced that this is just random stuff, even though that's what she said. That looks like some kind of like alignment block for like a tumbler or something like that. It's thick acrylic, maybe half inch acrylic. Uh, so we'll swing back around to that. Uh, we've got some machine screws, look like M5s, and a Allen wrench, extra M5s, little shorties. Some more acrylic jig pieces there, and it uh, looks like a USB stick with a copy of EasyCAD that we are not going to use. Um, we'll use our own copy. Uh, cheapo laser glasses that, again, we are not going to use. I don't have my good... no. Oh, actually, you know what? These are not horrible. <laughs> uh, these are actually kind of nice. They don't fit over my glasses, but they're not bad. They feel nicer than I thought they would feel. I'm sure they're decent, but we have the free mascot ones that we're going to use. Oh my god. <clears throat> okay, so if you guys have ever wondered how they get these so small, it's because the entire power supply is jammed into this brick 
Look at this. That's really big. That's like... That's like half the width of my face. This is a monster. Uh, let's see. AC adapter, four amps in, 7.5 at 24 volts out, 180 watts. That's a big boy brick right there. Uh, so there's the brick. Yeah, that's a beefy power supply for real. Uh, not a diode laser, David. This is uh, the EM Smart fiber laser it's like the smallest fiber laser um and we'll talk we're going to talk a little bit in a minute once we're actually done unboxing things uh, as we're putting it together we'll talk about why i really wanted these um but uh printer cable just a regular usb a to usb b this is the part where we have to be a little careful so it's a little more foam over here here's the power cord for the power supply and the tower is tucked in over here so here's the tower this is heavy this is not like just a light piece of aluminum this thing is like a freaking brick um that's that's got some weight to it that's like 15 pounds by itself um good that it's sturdy bad for portability i don't know uh all right so here's the this is the part that really we got to be careful of uh some kind of mounting Plate. I'm sure we'll need that in a minute. I don't see anything in the way of instructions. Some more metal business cards. Uh, I don't see anything in the way of instructions, but it can't be that hard. I think it's going to be pretty straightforward. I'm going to move the box to the ground so we have somewhere to put the laser uh, when we bring it up to the desk. So let's move this down and then pull this out. And this is pleasant. <laughs> Uh, this is cool because I'm holding the entire, that's, I mean, that's it, plus the tower, right? So uh, you could actually realistically probably put this in a large backpack and carry it around if you really wanted to, which is uh, kind of badass. Uh, but there it is. That's the entire unit. I think before we put this together, I, I actually want to open the case and see what's inside it. Because uh, we don't know for sure what's inside it. I'm expecting like a 30 watt it's a 25 watt laser i've never seen a 25 watt laser before let me pull my chair up we're gonna talk for a minute Ugh. all right let's just get this out of here too uh there's a little kind of pack core we'll just move that out of the way um so they say get out of here they say that it's a 25 watt laser i've never heard of a 25 watt laser before so i really want to open this up and see if there's actually a 25 watt max source inside of it um we're not we're not super worried about it being a max source right the entire unit let's just get a price on it too we'll see if it is what they say it is um and it should be uh, but let's just let's just pull up. Let me see really quick. Uh, desktop. That's oh hey look that's my back end. Uh, it always goes to the wrong monitor here. Uh, let's get you guys over to the main. There we go. And we'll open Chrome. Do do do. All right, perfect. So uh, let's go to 3P lasers. So here's the first thing to know is that these lasers are branded by a ton of different companies. 3p lasers is the manufacturer this is the company making the the em smart lasers okay uh here's the old ones so the old ones still selling for 25.99 the old ones are kind of cool because they do fold down flat but also this seems very portable as is uh it also doesn't have that fiber optic cable on it uh so you can't really move things around uh this has like its own mounting plate and stuff so here's the different models the basic one the basic 1R, so this is the basic one with the rotary uh, attachment ability, right? Uh, notice the basic one is the 18 watt, all right? And then uh, they have the 2R, which is the 25 watt. Uh, and there's the basic 2 down here as well. And then lastly, they have this MP20, which is a 20 watt JPT MOPA. 
uh, which is interesting. So we've got the Max over here, and then we've got the 20-watt JPT MOPA, which I'm assuming has a wider frequency range than the Max is going to have. But again, we'll open it up, and we'll get a model number on that Max source so that we can find out what we're actually working with. This would have been cool to get, but it's okay. I didn't pay for this. I got it for free, uh, so I'm not going to complain. So here it is, guys. $2,469. Not bad for a fiber laser. Um, we'll see how well it performs. Uh, we're not going to be doing things that we do with the 60 watt M7, right? So going into it with that, uh, you know, mindset is just going to disappoint us. Uh, I guess they sent me the black one. We'll see. Um, do, 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 do. So yeah, blah, blah, blah. F theta lens. I don't think the lens comes out. We'll mess with that too. High quality laser source, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So uh, that's it. Here we go. Uh, the 2R. So 25 watts, max source, rotary support. Uh, runs on easy CAD. 0 to 8,000. Doubt it. Uh, 110 by 110 lens. Support field lens replacement. Interesting. Check mark there. So maybe we can replace the lens. Uh, it's got a 200 millimeter max marking height, though we could, I guess, replace the tower if we really had to. I don't know. Uh, we'll check it out uh 1064 repeat accuracy is kind of industry standard there um frequency range it's saying 20 to 60 so um i'm assuming this is correct i don't see why it wouldn't uh why it wouldn't be air cooling two-year warranty okay so that's kind of just the the specs there what we're getting into before we actually get into it um let me catch up on chat over here uh, I think it's the LMC V2, not V4. Yeah, it's uh, it's likely the light board. Uh, nice. I have the first EM Smart. It's a neat little machine, even if it is limited. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh. Let's see. J Max here. Jason's here. What's up, Jason? Uh. Crack it. We're gonna. We're gonna crack. Got my toolbox right here. We're about to open it up. Uh. The sleeve looks nice for a power or fiber optic cable. Yeah. This sleeve is B. It's like. Thick too and like rubberized uh this is not like a this is like a that's like a thing um i still would be extremely careful with it but uh definitely nicer than i, I would have expect um what's the work area it's a 110 by 110 don't forget to hit the like button yes please do uh they have a 70, 110, and a 150. I would, uh, yeah, I guess I'll have to check their shop. Uh, it's, it's beefy. It, it has some weight to it. It's not, it's not, you know, a laptop, but it's like as close as you're going to get, I think. Um, <sighs> J-Mac's here. J-Mac fighting the, uh, the late night urge to sleep, hanging out with us. The fans are pretty good, Mark says. That's cool. 3D HP's here. What's up? Uh, Boba the Fets, add more fans. I could just add another fan. I don't really have access to, like, milling equipment. That's not really, like, my ballpark, but I could probably find somebody to do that for me. Uh, OWS is here. I feel like he's working on something from the Matrix. Yeah, I wish. How's the little one? Oh, she's good. Warranty voided. Check. Machine broken. Check. Stream over. It's, uh, the warranty sticker was not on the case, so I did not void a warranty opening this up. Uh, the only warranty sticker that I saw the entire time that we were inside the machine was on the Max Laser Source, uh, which we did not open. So, uh, as of right now, we have not done any warranty voiding activities, which is good. Oh, it's got that Chinese shrink wrap feel to it. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Look, little, uh, <laughs> little flip up handle. That's fun. All right. Uh, boom. So that's where that sits. Easy enough. Uh, this, no doubt, is our little tower bed. Uh, everything has these stickers on it, I guess, that kind of make it easy to put together, though they're ugly. And I don't want to stare at that every time I look at this machine. Because it really is kind of pretty. I mean, you got to give them credit. Even the original EM Smart units have like a Apple-esque vibe. You know, they're very clean and straightforward. 
uh, looking machines. There's no extra. There's nothing on here that doesn't need to be on here. Um, everything's metal too, which is really cool. There's no plastic on this thing anywhere. Um, I'm actually kind of impressed. I'm actually a little bit impressed. Uh, so this is labeled M2, which I'm assuming is for that. Yep, it says M2. So we'll pop the screws in. We're gonna need our little Allen. And let's just pop these suckers in real quick. I hate that. Don't you guys hate that? When you can't turn an Allen head. Oh, it's so annoying. And they gotta do like 800 of these little half turns in order to get something tight. I'm really excited to play with this right now. This is actually really cool. Sorry for the clanking. There's no other way to tighten these in a reasonable way. Tighten these down. Uh, all right, this also says M2. Oh, th <laughs> thank you. My wife just opened the door and chucked a trash bag at me. Had to turn my, I have an air purifier in here. I had to turn that back on. Okay, so M2 just sits there. It's easy enough. Stickers covering the holes though. Come off nicely. Excellent. Okay, there's that. All right. While useful, the stickers annoy me. Probably would have figured it out on my own eventually, and this is. Annoying. I don't like it. Okay. Come on. Okay. Let's get this in here. One. Two. Three. Four. Get this lined up. <laughs> Probably not my brightest idea. Probably could have seen that coming. If I had half a brain, I would level this. In fact, I might. I think I see the little stair right over there. Not that I think the table's level, but we can do something. We can, add, we can level it with the bed. Um, to be fair, there's not a ton of play. It kind of just sits where it sits.
Sorry guys, the screwing section is not that exciting, but it's kind of where we're at at the moment. All right, last one for this. I'm not looking forward to getting under the laser path to screw those in. Those are just barely tight, and that's got a little wiggle to it. So, stare it shockingly level with the ground. Uh, that's really not bad at all. And then you are way off. So that needs to be bearish. not it's not great it's not the uh, that's gonna take a little work later probably because I'm really picky about that but I also don't want you guys to watch me tightening Allen bolts for the rest of the stream so at some point we're just gonna accept it I mean it's close and there's not a lot more to really do about that. I'm probably going to end up having to shim this in the front just to knock the whole thing back just a little bit. Again, we'll do that later. So, uh, last but not least, the laser bath. And, of course, the sticker is directly over where we need our screw to go. I think the most impressive thing, honestly, the most impressive thing about this entire unit is that they got a scan head in here, uh, which I think is pretty cool. All right. Uh, OWS says, oh, you Americans with affordable fibers. I mean... This is affordable, but it's certainly no JPT. 3500 isn't bad for a JPT. And I'm not an advocate for spending this little money on a fiber laser. We'll get to that later. I'm going to talk about when you would actually want to buy this. Uh, spoilers, it's not for your first fiber laser. I really don't recommend this for your first laser. Uh, and we will talk more about that later. Um, I mean, I guess it, we'll talk more about that later. Um, you should really be spending more. Uh, does the bed have threaded holes? Yes, it does. And uh, sadly, it only seems to come with these little plastic screws. There aren't any real machine screws for the bed, which is highly disappointing. So they're just these little plastic things. Uh, but those are the only ones in the entire kit that they sent that are small enough to actually fit on the bed there. Uh, which is obnoxious, but again, that's a quick trip to the hardware store. Uh, at least they put the holes in the bed, so that's the important thing. All right, let's get this. Ooh, I don't like that. Ooh, okay. Gentle. Gentle is the name of the game until we get this locked down. It kind of like crinkled when I stood it up. It's probably fine, but I don't like hearing it. Okay, let's see. I guess this is just a by feel situation here. There we go. Sorry, it's actually very difficult to see with the studio lights in my face, uh, currently blinding my ass. Oh, finally, a 360 degree turn with the Allen wrench. And 
again, we could probably make sure that this is perfectly straight, or we can just correct the angle in EasyCAD, which is probably the easier solution. Uh, but I'll, I'm probably going to end up undoing all of the work that we've done tonight and making sure everything is straight and level uh, a little later on after the stream. But for now, yeah, a tiny bit of play with two screws in. The tolerances are fairly tight. They're not the worst. Uh, they're not the best. But, again, $2,600, right? So... Hey James, good to see you man. Am I turning this the wrong way? Right, righty tighty, right? I feel like I'm just kind of bashing up against the, it's really hard to see. Except this last one. Come on, baby. I was turning it the wrong way because I'm an idiot. Okay. And you go in. Okay very tight now with the three screws in and finger tight so it should be fairly straight one two three and four all right done we're done screwing stuff together and there it is guys uh, there it is it's very small it's extremely small <laughs> um, it's small let's see weight wise not bad uh, I mean it's a fiber laser that you can pick up and hold over your head uh, when it's together so that's pretty cool I mean like that's what I'm saying it's got it's got its uses for sure. Um, our little tower functioning is intended. I don't love the tiny little handle, but it's portable, right? I mean, that's what we're here to do. I don't have I don't have a focal stick for this, obviously, because we've never unboxed it. Uh, we will remedy that shortly, but in the meantime. It does have the little two dot focus uh, with the red dot on there. Rotary tool. We'll get to that later. We might not even get to that today. Um, so uh, I'm assuming the copy of EasyCAD they sent me is going to have things like adjusted for this machine. They might have like a core file on here. So while we're not going to use this actual copy of EasyCAD on the machine, uh, we'll definitely open it to at least check for settings. We need to plug it into USB, so let's get that done. plug in our gigantic power brick so there's that beast right there hey Herb, what's up man uh, no problem this was as early as I could do it so uh, no sweat off my back This is the Batman of fiber lasers. That's true. It's totally badass. Uh, 
I'm sure that uh, it's fine for you, Mark. If you think that it's working well for you, then, uh, you know, there's it's not a bad decision, you know? The best laser is the one that works for you, uh, which is what I've always said. Uh, if this is the only thing in your budget, then that's fine. You know, like you don't have an option. At that point, you don't have an option. But if you have a bigger budget than this, I wouldn't, I wouldn't start here uh, because it's just not going to offer some of the other, you know, capabilities that a larger machine is going to afford you. Uh, you can't use really the super large lenses with it. 25 watts just isn't enough power to drive a 200 millimeter lens. It's just not. Uh, however you want to spin it. Interesting hookups on the back, but let's just get that plugged in. Throw that over there. Okay, we're going to see if the power brick is plugged in. Power, power brick is not full. Let's try this. E stop. Power. It's alive. It's very quiet. That's nice. The, my camera did not like me plugging this in because it just drew like a ton of power. Um, but here it is. Uh, that's good. If we pull this off here, little lens cap. Uh, some marks on the inside of the lens cap. I hope that didn't like mark when it was turned on. And we have like a button or a switch for our focusing beams somewhere. Maybe I don't know. We'll get to it. Uh, okay, so machine is on. It's plugged in. That's great. Uh, let's plug in our EasyCAD USB stick here. And we'll, uh, we'll take a look at what's on the USB. Three P Lasers is here. Hey, what's up? Uh, this isn't even the workshop. This is uh, this is my home studio, <laughs> uh, and this is the perfect laser for a home studio. So um, we're excited to be playing with it. So far, everything is really, really nice. Uh, really happy with it. Uh, I'll have a trailer that's equipped, but not sure to do indoor vent. Blah, 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 doo, 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 doo. Wendy, this would be a good machine for you, Wendy, if you're trying to go on the road. Okay, uh, so here we go. Um, let's switch over to desktop mode and see what is on the USB stick that they sent. So uh, we've got EM Smart Basic Software, EasyCAD Lite, Note for Start Marking, and a core file for our machine. So that's really nice. Uh, the core file is right there. It's labeled for our serial number. Let's see what's in this Word file. Please kindly take off the lens cap. Thank you for the reminder. Uh, I have definitely marked the inside of the lens cap. I know you guys have too. <laughs> that's literally it. <laughs> it's just a reminder to take the lens cap off. Um, so that's good. Uh, we have EM Smart Basic Software. What's in here? Drivers. Uh, looks like they sent some vector files which I cannot preview, but we'll take a look at those, probably because it's zipped up. EM Smart Lite, which just looks like EasyCAD. Um, we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, unpacking, probably should have looked at this first. <laughs> uh, that's a video. There's a couple of RAR files in here of stuff that's already in the folder, so that all looks good. Um, so let's come back out here and get these extracted. Should all fit on the on the stick. Yep, 
Yeah, I froze for a second because of the power draw. It messed with my... Because my camera's on an AC adapter. Oh, this is horribly slow. I regret everything. Cancel. Undo. Uh, let's delete this. It's going to try to just do it on the stick. I don't really love putting outside software on my computers, but uh, for now we'll just call this EM Smart, and we'll open it up and drop that in. Okay. So, uh, we should be able to extract faster now that we're on the desktop. Yeah, much better. Okay. Don't ever run EasyCAD off of a USB stick, too. I get this question a lot. Uh, it's not good to run EasyCAD off a USB stick. It messes with a bunch of the essential functions um, and makes things really difficult on you. So uh, just avoid that altogether. We'll get rid of the zips. We got folders and folders here, and I need to fix that because that's going to drive me nuts. All right, so uh, basic software. So EM Smart. I'm really interested in this right here. What do you do? EM Smart. Cannot find dog dongle software will work at demo state. Uh, and that is because I have the Lightburn drivers installed instead of the EasyCAD drivers. So let's go to Device Manager. And really quick, we're going to find our USB devices and... Uh, uninstall. So let's just get rid of our light burn drivers. We will scan for hardware changes and there's our Elm CV2. So now we should be able to run their uh, cannot open connect file. Okay, so uh, this is reskinned EasyCAD. Uh, the icons are just a little bit different, but it's EasyCAD. Um, light, mind you, EasyCAD light. Uh, and then let's back out here. So they also include an EasyCAD Lite folder. It's 2.14.16. Uh, there's the EasyCAD 2. Cannot open correct file. Again, that's just because the file directory has changed. It's very easy to fix in here. We'll just pop in here. Uh, and we can go to our folder and uh, select the core file. So uh, again, this is EasyCAD Lite. Um, so that's all there. That's fine and dandy. Uh, we're not going to use that. Uh, I made this copy earlier today um, of my EasyCAD folder for the rest of my machines. So we're just going to call this uh, EM Smart. And the one thing that we, well, we want a couple things out of here. So the first thing we need is, so let's open this and let's check our f3 param file here and we're going to need to just take a look at some of these settings so this is 20 to 200 which i don't think is right that should be 20 to 60. uh our red light pointer is on output 4. our door io is 14. i wonder what that controls uh laser ready is on 5. marking finish is on 10. so th this is the kind of stuff that we need to pay attention to so i'm going to go ahead and screenshot that and we'll save this as one to the desktop so we can reference it later. Uh, other, tch, tch, nothing important. And IPG YLP. This is all kind of just like the basic setup. Uh, field is all set up. We already have a correction file, so we don't need any of that either. So, um, good. So that's all we need out of that. It's just that one screenshot right there. And then let's not forget our core file. We need our core file too, so we'll paste this down as well. And we're done with the EM Smart folder. So we can get rid of that. And again, this copy over here, guys, uh, this copy is just the community edition. So it's at lasereverything.net slash downloads. You'll find it EasyCAD 2 CE, uh, the community edition. Um, and that is let me just got thumbnails over here nothing is organized right now uh that is definitely the recommended copy of easycad to run uh yes it's the full version of easycad 2 uh no it doesn't matter um it will still work on a light board so we'll delete our one 10 millimeter core file there and let's just copy our one that they supplied so that everything is all corrected for and set up and uh we'll open our uh little port thing there so that we can copy those settings out 
and here's so here's the community edition we know we're in the community edition because the grid's all set up for us uh, we'll come to the F3 param and the first thing we need to do is use uh, the appropriate correction file so let's come into our EM smart folder and pick the core file from uh, their install uh, so that'll overwrite everything in here so that should all be working now and the other thing that we need to do so we're gonna set this to 20 to 60 yes good and this is not a JPT we had it set to IPG YLP out of the factory 60 uh, so that's all the same now and then we just need to copy over our ports so we had door IO set to port 14 I really want to know what that does there's no door on this obviously though it may be for their enclosures because they do sell enclosures on their website uh, laser ready on port 5 red light pointer on port 4 marking finish IO on port 10 at 10 milliseconds and start marking at port 15 uh, pulse mode everything's set to high 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 okay great done 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 looks great boom done all right so uh, now I suppose we'll get the laser cam and we'll actually start working with this machine let's see what it can do Oh, David, thanks for stopping by, man. I'm sure you're already gone, but um, I appreciate you hanging out with us for a little bit today. Uh, 58 people watching. Thanks for uh, thanks for hanging out on the stream, guys. Uh, I appreciate having you here, as always. Um, I'm actually, so we're actually going to jump back over to this really quick, and I'm going to grab the laser cam. I'm going to get the laser cam set up. I have the world's worst tripod at the office. It's not very good. All right. I think the laser cam is in a good spot. <sighs> We're going to switch over to it and see right now. So let's try laser. Oh, there we go. Okay, great. So um, it's a little close. Let me see. We can just. So there's the top. There's the bed. Eh, I guess the top down is okay. You guys know what it looks like. Uh, we've got a little blue status indicator light on the front there. And uh, you'll notice our focusing dots have shown up. Uh, so that's good. That that's all there. So uh, again, not the best angle, but we're kind of working around this weird folding table at the moment. So that'll do. Here's my hands. Very small. Um, so, free coupon for live room customer, Alex. Cool, uh, coupon guys. If you're in live chat, I guess use my name uh, as a coupon. Uh, but selling some of the gantries before long. All right guys, so uh, I think, right, the number one way to start this experience off, and I'm gonna regret this because I don't have exhaust set up at the moment, uh, is gonna be with one of their business cards. So let's try that. That gives us a really good view of the two dots. We do need to make a small focal adjustment, though it's very close. Uh, fine control on the focusing there. Uh, it actually raises and lowers fairly slow. And let's pop over to the desktop and just get our hello world out of the way. So hello world and uh, let's do 50 is a little big let's do 25 I just don't want to blow myself out here center that up let's give it a quick hatch 
uh, bi-directional two and three are off uh, cross hatch is fine 45 degrees 0 0.02 good 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 okay boom there's our hatch uh, and then our, our normal params aren't really gonna work super well so 1080 25 frequency is kind of my standard aluminum for the 30 watt well this is 25 watts it might work okay I also don't know if the timing is set up this is the other thing that we probably should have copied out of the other easy cat install uh, let's see if we can run them side by side because that would be helpful uh, do I still have it in the recycle bin no I don't so I will have to get it back off the drive I deleted it okay well it's gone I'll just redo the laser timing later I'm sure it was in there probably shouldn't have done that that was irresponsible of me um, so here it is uh, let's light it up and it is sideways uh, so if I open this up here uh, to you guys it's gonna look upside down uh, but really it should be this way so our core files just uh, fine but we do need to negate an axis or uh, change let's see galvo 2 equals X okay slide it again and then something's negated so uh, you'd want to redo your core file I guess uh, so f3 param let's try unnegating galvo 2 light not quite negate galvo 1 and negate galvo 2 all right f3 param negate galvo 2 okay light and perfect there we are uh, let me grab some glasses and we'll see what this thing can do the uh, the no IR glasses are at the shop so I'm using my free mascots today uh, we've got a green status light here guys we're ready and let's mark and see what happens all right so right out of the gate how do we do uh, it's fine it only it, I guess let me pull up the main cam here uh, it only really removed the paint uh, we didn't really mark the metal so uh, let's try that again a little bit slower we are at 25 frequency which is right around where we should be so let's try like a hundred power <laughs> Uh, we're really gonna crank it. I don't know what the pulse the peak pulse power is for this source uh, But the frequency is 25 maybe 37 just to try to max that pulse energy and let's throw the speed down just a little bit. We really want some ablation here It's really just kind of annealing um, or what would be annealing I guess what we would consider annealing um, on aluminum so instead uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check continuous here and we're gonna just let it mark on a loop and then let's just play with the focus because I don't necessarily trust the uh, trust the dual dot there yeah right about there so that's out of focus that's out of focus. It's very weak. It's going to take some getting used to. So let's try really slowing things down now. How about 250 speed? Still not ablating. Maybe we'll try a different material. Well, 
Let's see, what are you? Are you just... I mean, aluminum really should be, like, the easiest thing. Oh, that's a mirror. That's cool. They sent me a mirror. What else is in there? A little bag of tricks here. That feels like aluminum. Uh, this has, like, a shiny playful side but we really want the raw side i just want to see what it does to this oh there we go Okay, so the focus is way off on those red pointers. Uh, this is doing much closer to what I would expect the machine to do uh, with these settings. So that is steel, and that's nice and ablated now. Okay, so uh, with that out of the way, let's come back to something like this and see if we can reproduce that success on the black business card again. Yes. Much better. I don't have a CO2 here, so I can't cut a focal stick right now. Um, but this is absolutely better. <laughs> I was I was very concerned for a minute. I, I really didn't. I was I was kind of freaking out because <laughs> we are live, and that was going to be embarrassing. Uh, but it does it does it's doing it. Doing a good job. Hey, HTL, just glad to have you at all. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's no, uh, again, it's not a 60 watt M7, uh, but we did just blow a hole right through that card, <laughs> and uh, we've, we've, We've marked the bed. So that hello world, we've left a permanent hello world on our uh, on our bed there now. Um, so it's definitely powerful. It's not weak. Uh, it's got it's got some fight for sure. Because uh, we were going pretty slow there. What is the smart part of the laser? Uh, the smart part is the marketing. The marketing part is the smart part. Uh, so we're gonna flip this over. Let's try again with our normal settings because we did slow this way down because I was freaked out about the ablation. Uh, so really, we should be at around 1,000 speed, uh, 80 power uh, is kind of our our aluminum general setting there, 25 frequency. Now that we're actually in focus, uh, this should do something much more akin to what we're expecting. So uh, let's go ahead and run that. We can turn continuous off. Let's say two passes, just to... Uh, there it is. There it is. So that's one pass, and then here's two. And the nice thing about this, too, is that the uh, the LMA parameter library should work fine for this. So uh, if we sort by name here, and we find, like, our steel white finish, which is great for aluminum, uh, and we run that, we'll run that once. Uh, that should give us a nice white finish. So, yeah, I mean, the entire LMA parameter library, basically, is going to work for this machine. Um, and that's a bonus, right? Uh, that's pretty deep, even just two passes. This is actually really, uh, this is really kicking ass right now. Um, I'm impressed. I, I was very concerned about the, you know, a 25 watt laser. Let's see if I can get it in the light. Sorry, this light, this lighting is not good for, uh, showing products off. It makes me look great, but, uh, not so great for this. But there's our Hello World right there that's looking nice uh it's deep it looks the timing looks great right out of the box it could probably use a small adjustment but what couldn't um you know we can test their core file if we really wanted to test their core file um but that doesn't really matter because at the end of the day you can just make your own core file 
So we can do a 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter box and apply it and center it and mark it. And we've got our caliper over here. And it's 10.7, it's close. Um, so what would we be paying attention to here? What are the big things that you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to if you pick a laser like this up? Uh, obviously, um, we have the leveling issue, right? Uh, it's not level with the bed right now, uh, and it really should be. So we'd wanna come in, shim what we have to shim to get these two perfectly level with one another. That's the first thing. Uh, the second thing that we need to be concerned with, checking the core file, uh, checking our focus. The two dots are nowhere near one another right now. That's actually pretty considerably off. And I'm assuming that there's no real way to adjust that. There are two screws under here uh, for this panel to come off. And then maybe we could go in and make adjustments if you're really committed to that. But I think that the best thing to do is really to just uh, probably make a focal stick. I'm team focal stick. If you guys watch the channel uh, and have watched for any considerable amount of time, you know that I'm a big proponent of just a manual focal stick. Uh, so that would be the other thing that I'd want to do to get this set up. But we ate a hole in that car, uh, the card, um, and that's impressive to me. Uh, that's actually very impressive uh, that we just kind of chewed through that card in like two seconds. Um, so that's nice. Uh, what else can we test? I, they did send this steel dog tag. We could try to do like a Z mark with it. Uh, since we know where our focal point is, uh, we should be able to get like a decent Z mark on something like that. There's no reason why we shouldn't. It doesn't take high frequencies. Mark says team focal stick. Hell yeah. Uh, Ruben says kind of late, but glad to be here for my first Friday live stream. Nice. Glad you're here, Ruben. Uh, Richie, thanks for coming by. Great to see you. HTL says, uh, I'm a bit jazzed now, so I'm going to back up and watch the whole thing, I think. Okay. All right, man. Sounds good. Um, I know a guy that makes focal sticks. Yeah, definitely check out James Brewer's uh, Etsy page. James, you're free to go ahead and drop that in the chat. You have my permission if you'd like to share the link. Um, of course, I, I want to support your uh, focal stick venture on that because, uh, you know, we trust you. Uh, so we like James. So go ahead and share that link, James, if you uh, so please. We need to get uh, James Brewer's focal stick link up on the buying guide, Kyle, if you're still here. Uh, Mark, thanks for coming. Great to see you. Uh, hey, Anil, great to see you. Thanks for coming by. Um, so yeah, so I guess we'll, uh, you know, we do have this steel dog tag, so let's do a little, a little Z marking, uh, test here, uh, just because, because we can, um, I'm mad at myself for deleting the contents of this USB drive, uh, that's my big thing that I'm upset about right now, is because they gave us all those nice vectors to play with and things, and stuff like that, and I just kind of, like, dropped it, uh, I just Im immediately nuked it, which is probably not the best call. Uh, so here's just, we're gonna do a Z mark, okay? So we'll hatch this. Uh, let's come into our parameter library. We will come down to our Z mark setting. Steel, Z mark black. Uh, so this is good, we are in focus and I don't have a focal stick, so I can't use my Z mark focal stick spacer. Um, so let's just, you know, I guess eyeball it, right? Uh, so let's come down to the laser tab here. And let's just light this up. That's very big. Uh, so we'll do one where we find the right focal point, and then we'll do another to just kind of test the full thing. Again, I know I'm sorry about the lighting. In the future, the EM Smart will be over there with the other lasers. So uh, we won't be fighting the uh, we won't be fighting the lighting so much. But for now, uh, it's kind of what we're stuck with. So we have Mark, and uh, right out of the gate, I think we're really close to where we need to be focally, because it's, so, a, so basically it's a taller item. 
So we were already out of focus. We can see the sparks, uh, so we know we're blading. And now we're kind of getting back out to like Z marking territory here. You don't want to hear it. If you guys haven't already done a Z mark, you don't want to hear it and you don't want to see it. Uh, Z mark should be nice and quiet. There should be really like no sparks uh, whatsoever. Um, and this is actually marking nicely. Guide us about 3D marking machine also. Yeah, maybe at some point in the future we'll get a 3D fiber. Um, I'm not personally super interested in them, which is why I haven't seen them on the channel yet. Otherwise, I would have gotten somebody to send us one already. But we can take a look at it in the future. Uh, Lightburn is going to have some awesome 3D features in it, so we'll definitely be taking a look at those when those are released. Uh, Jason asks, what is Z marking? Uh, go check out the video I did on it. It's one of the first videos we ever uploaded to the channel. Uh, but basically, we're just defocusing to get a black mark on steel, and it works very well. Uh, very, very well. So go check that out. J-Mac wants me to get someone to send him a 3D laser. I will get right on that, buddy. Uh, but yeah, we're just defocusing to get a black mark on steel. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, 3D says, why didn't it not have one included? Uh, have what? Uh, a focal stick? I don't know. I don't think most companies include focal sticks. It looks black to me. It does not look black in the camera, um, just from that very specific angle. But it, it is like annealing correctly. The Z-Mark is technically an anneal, uh, and it is looking black from where I'm sitting. So we'll, we'll take a look in a second when it's done. Uh, the, the main thing about Z-Marking is that it's slow, so... Uh, just a little bit of weight on that. I probably could have defocused just a little bit more. Again, I don't have my focal stick, and I don't have my Z-Mark spacer. So we're guessing at the focus here, and, and focus is very key with Z-Marking. But it does look pretty good. made a small adjustment to the focus there but I may have just made things worse it's really hard to tell I think we could get it what we really need is a focal stick <laughs> once we have a focal stick everything else will be much easier Mitchell Huntington got an order for 140 shot glasses today congratulations Mitchell that's awesome is it easier for blacks with JPT frequency range? On steel, I would argue no. Uh, you, it, Z marking is not a high frequency mark. Uh, you know, I know some people that use MOPA lasers to great effect uh, for getting faster black marks, but uh, non-MOPA JPT is probably just, you know, overkill. Uh, you're probably just adding extra money for no particular reason. Uh, it's a little rainbowy in some areas uh but overall fairly black i'm going to do one more and i'm going to let me just make sure i'm going in the right direction raise our focus just a tiny bit more and let's try that one more time uh kind of all together because that one's kind of all over the place And we'll run this one uh, and continue to chat here for a minute. I uh, probably shouldn't touch the table. I keep resting my arm on the table and I'm shaking it. Open, open host says, uh, got to head out. Thanks for the demo. Have a good night, everyone. Good night, man. Thanks for coming by. Always great to see you. Appreciate having you by for the stream. I wonder if my wife is still up. All right, this is looking much better. I could hear it a little bit before, so I actually raised the focus just a little bit higher. Uh, and now it's like dead silent, which is perfect. That's what we want. We want it nice and quiet for a good Z mark. So what can you use this for and what can't you use this for? Uh, obviously, there's going to be some restrictions with field size. Um, I'm not sure what lenses they sell on their website. I think somebody mentioned them earlier. I think they said 70, 110, 150. Which makes sense because that's about what you're going to be able to take advantage of with the 200 millimeter tower. Uh, remember, the standard fiber laser tower is 
500 millimeters, right? So you can get that much higher, uh, much, much, much higher, more than twice as high uh, as the 200 millimeter tower that comes with this machine. So that's the real limiting factor. The other limiting factor is larger lenses take more wattage to drive as effectively as you can smaller lenses uh, and get similar results. And that's because of the larger dot size. And this just simply doesn't have that much power behind it. It's a 25 watt source and it's performing well uh, with our testing with the 110 millimeter lens, uh, which is to be expected. 110 is a fairly small, uh, limited focal distance um, of about 160 millimeters. Uh, so of course it's gonna perform well. When you start popping things in there like a 150 or potentially like a 175 or 200, this machine is going to get very weak very quickly. Uh, so that's kind of an issue. Um, and those, for those reasons, really, the, the, the tower height and just the lack of ability to swap between lenses and the low-ish power output of these machines, I wouldn't actually recommend this as a beginner machine. Um, again, if your budget dictates that you can, this is what you can afford, I think the quality is there. Go for it. Pull the trigger. Uh, but I would really push people to get a more capable full-size machine to learn on um, because I think something like this would get really frustrating really fast if you don't fully understand its limitations. Um, you know, a, a basic 30-watt or 50-watt machine has a lot more versatility, even though it's not as portable, uh, to be able to learn what you are expecting for from a fiber laser, you know, what, what you're expecting this machine to do. And then you come back and you look at something like this where the portability and the lightweight and, you know, ease of, you know, use in a mobile sense, a, 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 the sense of mobility. Uh, and you can really take advantage of what this machine does well. And you understand the limitations because you've learned about these machines and you know how they work and you, you kind of understand the, the hurdles that something like this is going to throw at you a little bit better. I just think for, for newbies, this machine is going to present more frustrations than it does simplicities uh, to make it worth being your first fiber laser. But again, that said, if this is what you have the budget for, and it's a great price point, $2,600 for a fiber laser, a quality fiber laser, it feels nice, it's built really well, I don't love the max source. They have the JPT. You could get that. It's an extra thousand bucks. For what you're getting, the price is where it needs to be. The shipping was really fast. The build quality is amazing. The actual laser itself is awesome. Super cool. Um, and it's, it's built really nice. It looks nice. It's working great. Uh, so if this is what your budget dictates you can afford, sure, get it. Let this be your first machine. But if you have an even slightly higher budget, uh, I would really recommend taking a look at some of the 30 or 50 watt offerings with the more standard sized, uh, I think they're 85 millimeter threaded F theta lenses, um, and learn on something like that that isn't going to put up as many roadblocks as far as what you can accomplish with it. Um, but that's just my two cents on that. Um, Could I use the other lens I have for my 50 watt laser on this one if I bought it? No, uh, not even close. Uh, and the reason why is the lens. So apparently these lenses are swappable and they are, that's cool. It's a little thing. I didn't want to twist on it too hard there, uh, but I will show you M52. Yeah, there's some, it's an M80 something. Uh, yeah, look at that. So this is very, very, very small uh, in your hand. F equals 163. So it's about 163 millimeter focal length, but it's a much smaller package. So I come over here to the Mactron, and I take the Mactron lens out. Sorry, the threads on this one are a lot longer. Uh, so this is the standard F theta lens from Cloud Ray. Okay, right there, you can see it there. Uh, catch it in the light a little bit so you can see the size. Here's the one that goes in the EM Smart. Okay, so much, 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 much smaller. Uh, almost half the size, uh, maybe a quarter of the size 
of the full size F theta lens. Not a big deal, but very specific lenses. I would really be interested to know if 3P is still here, uh, or EM Smart, I guess, uh, if they're still here. If these lenses, if, is there a search term that you can use to find these lenses from a third party? Uh, or is this a proprietary lens? Um, that's an important thing to know and I don't know the answer. Because uh, if this is a proprietary lens, then you have to buy it from them. And that kind of sucks. But um, the more important point is that the lenses are interchangeable. And that's nice. That's a good thing. Um, James Brewer says, Gotta run, guys. Alex, thanks for the stream. And shout out, always, man. You deserve it. Thanks so much for hanging out with us tonight. Uh, this model is the EM Smart Basic 2R. That's right. This is the 2R here. Let's take a look, too, if we can, before we put this back in. Yeah, tiny little, tiny little Galvo mirrors up there. Uh, that's the other thing, too. I'm assuming this isn't a 10 millimeter mirror setup. Uh, so we probably have a slightly larger dot size on a laser like this. Um... Maybe 3P lasers can answer this for us. I don't know what kind of expander you guys are using, Night J Mac. Um, I don't know what kind of expander or what the technical head size is on, on this. Our Matron takes a 10 millimeter head, so we can spit out a much thicker beam, and that means that once it passes through our F theta lens, we're going to get a smaller dot size. Uh, there's no way they're fitting that 10 millimeter setup inside of this bar. I just don't buy it. Uh, so we're probably getting a bigger dot size on something like this too. Uh, so for things like photo marking and stuff like that, uh, you'll probably have to change your resolution compared to something like the 30 watt laser with the standard 10 millimeter head setup. Um, yeah, I just mentioned that Equinox again. I don't know if I'd recommend it as a first machine unless it was the only thing you could afford. Uh, which in which case it would be a good buy but i would from a theoretical perspective suggest getting a larger more standard machine first to learn on before getting something like this for the portability um here is our z mark gotta hide my face or it won't focus come on anything nothing let me zoom let forget i gotta zoom with this lens I guess by the time it catches the light, it looks white, but that's not how it looks to me. Uh, it's it's very dark, very dark black. Uh, that's a decent view right there. It's working. Uh, it's a that's a good Z mark. I cannot feel it, so it's a solid anneal with no ablation, uh, which is what we want. So um, I'm happy with that. A gradient test, we can do one. Uh, I'm certainly uh, happy to do that right now. If you'd like to do that together, we can do that together. Uh, I am going to switch over to Lightburn. Um, so let's zadig this and uh, see how it does with Lightburn. It should do fine. It's an EasyCAD Lightboard. We know that EasyCAD Lightboards are supported by Lightburn. Uh, so we should have no problem using Lightburn with this machine. So let's go to Downloads, Zadig. We're going to, you guys would probably appreciate seeing this. Uh, this is the driver installation process right now for EasyCAD boards. Uh, we have our, where is it, uh, LMCV4. We're just going to replace that with the standard Win USB driver. takes a minute that sounds like a good uh, good upgrade there Andy and a nice little compact unit too which is pretty nice uh, what's up Arctic climate welcome good to see you thanks for stopping by so yeah we're just installing the light burn drivers right now uh, and those are installed and let's go ahead and open light burn uh, so here it is. Right now I am set to uh, basically the machine thinks we're using the 30 watt JPT LP. 
um, which is fine. Again, it's the same library, right? Uh, from uh, the the same library from EasyCAD, uh, just in EasyCAD uh, or Lightburn format over here. Um, let's check a couple things. So we are on an older version of Lightburn, um, which is kind of a bummer because this doesn't have. Oh, it does. Okay, this is the most updated version. So uh, we can actually load a core file now, which is nice. So we're going to open our EM Smart folder. There's our core file. We'll hit open. It'll override. Great. Uh, we want both of those negated. And Galvo 2 should be the X axis. And I think that's all the changes that we made. So now we can hit OK. Uh, uh oh. This should be 110 by 110. Load core file. Open. It does not like. It does not like this for some reason. Um, could just be because I'm not on the right copy of Lightburn. Uh, hold on. Let me fix that real quick. I might as well. It'll only take a minute and it'll be worth it. Give me one second, guys. Bear with me. Just downloading the most recent copy of Lightburn here. Google Chrome is very concerned that Lightburn is a virus. Like, relax, bro. I know what I'm doing. All right, let's get that open. Close this. And set up. This will go super quick. Boom. Finished. Launch. There we go. Okay, new version. Uh, let's try to apply that core file again. So let's clear, load, open. Okay, great. So that retains our uh, expected size here. And we can go ahead and try to frame something. Yikes. Uh, so it frames, but it's, it's humming weird. <laughs> uh, it is not... Oh, it's doing a 10 by 10 again. Why are you doing that? It's so weird. It's such a weird thing that this core file works perfectly uh, in EasyCAD, but not in Lightburn. So what to do? What to do about that? I mean, I guess we could do it without a core file, right? So we could just, just for the sake of the stream, what I would actually probably recommend doing if I was trying to fix this for real is I would open this core file up in a program like core file 2 you can actually import a core file into that and then I'd resave it and try to bring it back into this again because I don't know what software this core file was made in uh, but obviously Lightburn is not reading it correctly uh, so by opening this core file in core file 2 and then resaving it, it would hopefully save in the core file 2 format which I know Lightburn can read correctly uh, but in order to do that we got to like do driver swaps and stuff it's like a whole big thing it's like a whole big event and i'm not really interested in doing that on stream right now so for now we'll just leave the settings as is i've just set the thing manually to 110 by 110 and uh let's try again here with a square and that looks good uh we should probably do some text oops uh, let's just do a little bit of text so that we know that things are oriented appropriately. Let's frame that. And that looks perfect.
Perfect. Excellent. Uh, the reason we just went through all that work is because uh, Kyle asked if we could do like a gradient test, uh, which I would love to do. So um, we'll come into drive, uh, MLE, laser everything. And then we're just going to come down to the photo episode that we just published recently. I uh, don't want those P testing. I guess we could do Cora. Right, um, we're familiar with this. We've all seen this before. Uh, for this test, let's grab a new card. Let's do a quick edit on this. So we're gonna adjust image. Uh, we're gonna negate it because we're in a card. Jarvis is fine. Um, 335 is the DPI that we used for um, the the Mactron when we did the photo engraving episode. So we'll start there and we'll see if that's too too tight or not. Uh, and then we'll open this up. Uh, we need to do a couple things. 300 speed, uh, 35 power is probably fine on the 25 watt source. And then uh, we need to set our dot width. 0.5 for 0.76 is where it needs to be. We want again 0.66% of our line interval. So 0.66% or what? Well, 66%. 0 0.66 uh, times our line interval gives us 0.05 uh, for our dot width correction, which is enabled. So that looks great too. We'll frame this up, and now we can really see the. Uh, the corrections have not <laughs> uh, been applied because we're getting this huge warping box, um, which I can try to show you now. There's not a lot to see in the laser cam at the moment. I can try to reposition it to get some of that glare out of there for you. So you can see it's warping way out the sides uh, of this card probably just reduce the size a little bit uh, and that's we will we will do that right now so uh, let's take our height down to 70 that should make it fit on the card and we'll frame that again and back over here on the laser cam we are just barely within the confines of the card so yes it's gonna be skewed because we're not working with a core file right now uh, and it's probably a little out of focus so we're probably gonna have to do a little live focusing but let's go ahead and give it a shot. Uh, we'll see what it's going to do. Glasses on, and we'll hit start. It's a lot of smoke, and I'm just breathing it in right now. Ugh. Uh, if you have, sorry, I'm covering my face. Uh, if you have a core file in EasyCAD that works, uh, it should work in Lightburn. You should be able to import it right in. Though I'm thinking that Lightburn's native lens correction, when it's completed uh, upon the full release of Lightburn software, will likely end up being better uh, than core file, in which case you probably want to redo your corrections for your lenses. Oh, poor choice of marking item. Let's go ahead and turn that air purifier onto high. <laughs> I have an exhaust, but it's way on the other side of the room. I'm not really set up for that. Uh, photo test is looking like a pass, though, for real. So that's awesome. Uh, so here it is. There's our photo, guys, uh, on the EM Smart. So yes, the EM Smart can do photos, no problem. Uh, you know, we should. I think the main reason Kyle wanted me to do this was because he wanted me to see if uh, the DPI was the same or different uh, because I had made those comments about the dot size. Um,
Yeah, I forgot that uh, I never copied the mic over to the microscope. There we go. Okay, mic's on the microscope now. So I was saying, uh, you know, I'm not positive if we were in focus or not here. Uh, you can see the DPI there kind of like spreads out uh, and then it's kind of starts to get closer together in these areas. The dots get bigger because I don't think we were like really in focus. Back down here, it starts to slim out again. So we actually could have probably turned the resolution up. Uh, so long story short, uh, comparable to a full size machine, which is impressive. Uh, I'm impressed. Uh, good dot size. So I don't know how they're doing it. Uh, but they, they have what seem to be 10 millimeter mirrors inside of this little head. I don't know if it's actually 10 millimeter mirrors. I don't know, again, what expander they're using, if any, in their laser path. Um, so I don't know what size the beam is entering the F theta lens uh, in order to, to uh, determine the dot size uh, where it is exiting. But just from like a basic standpoint with the photo, doing a DPI test, um, impressive initial results there. Uh, whatever they're doing, it's working because uh, this that looks perfect. Whoop, dropping it. Uh, that looks very, very, very good right there. It's so hard to get the. I need another full size studio light. Like right behind there. I don't have one up here. I've only got one there, and I've got a tiny little ring light on this side, so it's very difficult to see, but. Uh, it's there, and it looks good. So, uh, no problem. Good. Pass. That's a pass, too. Uh, it's a nice thing, guys. Uh, it's a nice little machine. I'm, I'm surprised. I, it's surpassed my expectations on just about every single thing that I could reasonably expect it to do. Um, and that's kind of where... Night, Kelly. Uh, that's kind of where you need to be realistic about this, right? Um, the fact of the matter is it has a 25 watt max laser source inside of it. Um, the tower is only 200 millimeters tall. The whole thing can be picked up and lifted over your freaking head. Uh, so there are compromises that have to be made to get it into that form factor. And I think that all of those comprom compromises are technical compromises. Uh, I don't think that there are any quality compromises being made here. Uh, I think the machine is rock solid. Um, the, like I said, there's hardly, I think the front cap here is plastic. Um, and that's about it. Uh, front plate, top plate, side plates, all metal. Uh, this is like some kind of rubber. Uh, on the the fiber optic cable there and then uh, metal back plate you guys saw how things were mounted to the board on the inside let's check on our fans uh, we've been running this for a minute that feels cool Whoop. just push the e-stop my bad uh, fans back here blowing cool air cooling is good um, I don't know guys I mean that's more or less it uh, you know, I, we do need to kind of get into this at some point, um, and we will. I don't know if we're going to go, like, psycho on the rotary today. Please don't cut a wire. Um, getting this all set up and stuff like that. I do have to do an episode on rings soon. Uh, I've had so many people ask me to do a ring rotary episode, and I still haven't done it. So maybe this would be a good machine for that, since it is so small. But if we just get this box here, just so we can take a look at it. Uh, standard two-phase stepper motor. It's got a cord wrapped around it, and it's got two slots in the bottom for mounting. So you could mount this up like that and rotate objects underneath it. Again, I wouldn't get your hopes up about doing full-size tumblers on something like this. Um, just doesn't seem to me like that's going to happen. You could, I, if you have a two, a larger two-phase stepper motor, like direct drive chuck rotary tool, I don't see any reason why you couldn't hook that up to this. 
so long as you can get your tower high enough to actually be in focus when you're marking, it should be fine. Um, it should be, you should be able to do like a full size tumbler, just not with this rotary. I just don't think that this little sad chuck on here is going to be able to do like a full size uh, tumbler. Um, so that's probably out of the question. But otherwise, you know, a decent little unit. It's good for small things. Like they sent us this little bottle. We can do that at some point. That's covered in powder coat. And I have zero plans on uh, burning a bunch of powder coat in my non-ventilated at the moment office. Again, we do have the air hookup over there. But I have to move a bunch of stuff around and get all this garbage out of here. So that I can actually move this folding table back next to the other machines. So the next time we show this on the channel, we'll have it back there, up against the wall. Uh, and we can actually bring the exhaust over. I'm still, <coughs> I'm like choking on that paint on the metal business card right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you guys have any questions, I'm happy to go over like specific stuff about it. I think I've shown off what I wanted to show off with this today, um, which is that it's here. It, it works well. Uh, it got to me in about a week, shipping-wise, so from the moment it left, uh, and it shipped from Wuhan via FedEx, uh, it was here in about a week, which was nice. Um, yeah, I, I want to mess with the rotary. It's getting really late, though. It's 11.20, almost 11.30 here, um, and I have to get up in the morning. Uh, we're working on that marketplace really hard right now. Uh, I believe these will be sold. I'm still working with 3P on this. We haven't come to like a definite conclusion but i'm fairly certain they will be joining us on the laser everything marketplace uh so if you want to pick one of these up and support the channel hang out for a couple weeks because uh we're gonna have them up on the laser everything marketplace so those guys will be uh there selling their machines um and i'm stoked because now i can get behind this um i i really did not like the em smart lasers when they first came onto the market but uh if you're using it right I, these little bastards can uh, can do some damage, uh, which is pretty wicked. So, um, yeah, works with Lightburn. Uh, the EasyCAD stuff they sent over was fine. Again, build quality is good. Power brick, good. Insides looked good. Genuine board, genuine source. Uh, is the marketplace fully operational yet? Not yet. Uh, we're finishing up vendor payout, so being able to pay vendors for sales that they've made. Uh, and we're also just taking care of some um, like legal compliance stuff like sales tax, things like that. Just a lot of technicalities that need to be ironed out. It's, it's functioning, but it's disabled. You cannot currently check out. Um, but if you'd like to see some of the vendors that we have over there, go check it out. 3P Laser should be joining us over there. Mactron's there, CK Laser, uh, SFX, uh, Wisely. Um, a ton of like really big names. Even um, J, uh, BJJCZ is there selling EasyCAD boards directly to consumers now. Uh, so that'll be cool too. So that's all in the works. So I work very hard on that every single day. It's really probably spend most of my time doing right now just to get that up and running. Once it's up, it'll kind of take care of itself. But there's been a lot of like legal nitty gritty that we've had to kind of trudge through to get that operational. Um, but yeah, Friday live day, guys. Uh, I hope you had fun. I, I hope you like the little EM Smart. Again, this is the Smart 2R. Base, the EM Smart Basic 2R. Again, the R stands for rotary. We will mess around with the rotary tool. Maybe for another live stream. Maybe we'll do something for the LMA members. Uh, if you guys support on the LMA, uh, maybe we'll make that kind of like a secondary LMA only live stream where we kind of dig into the rotary and test that out. Uh, just for kicks and giggles. Would I recommend this machine? Yeah, sure. Uh, if this is what you can afford, um, I'm impressed. Just be aware of its limitations. Uh, if, you, if you understand what this can't do because of its size, not because of its quality, it's a difference, uh, because of its size. If you understand what this cannot do because of its size, I think it's a good buy. Um, I, I would pay money for this uh, if I wanted like a probably like an on the road like kind of showpiece or you know if I was going to do like a, like an engraving truck at like a fair or something this seems like a good option for something like that uh, but that's all I've got guys so thank you so much for watching as usual um, 
If you have questions, comments, you're watching this after it was live, leave a comment down below. Uh, don't forget to smash the like button. You should come back after the live stream and leave a comment below anyway. It boosts engagement uh, and, and helps get this video in front of more people. Helps support the channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you get notified the next time I upload a video. Uh, Ruben says, uh, I enjoyed Friday Live Day. Thanks, Alex. I'll be here next Friday, hopefully from the beginning next time. No problem, Ruben. Uh, great to have you. Thank you so much for giving Friday Live Day a shot. We just kind of hang out uh, and, and dig into a thing. Uh, you know, we don't do every Friday, but we do damn near every Friday. Uh, we're pretty consistent with Friday Live Day, uh, which is awesome. Thanks, Wendy. Appreciate you hanging out. Um, I did subscribe i did the like button thing uh i guess if you want to support the channel if you enjoy watching stuff like this uh and you want to see me make more videos go join the lma it's masters.lasereverything.net it's the number one way to support the channel uh everything we do here is thanks to our members over there so don't forget to do that uh we don't have a normal start time it kind of varies from week to week but you can keep an eye on the facebook uh or discord uh, to get updated about when when Friday Live Day is going to happen. Uh, we usually post on there uh, anywhere from 12 hours beforehand to 5 minutes beforehand. It just kind of depends on the schedule and what's going on around the shop, around the house, uh, depending on what we have uh, going on that particular week. Uh, so not, not a firm schedule on Friday. Uh, but, you know, comes and goes. Uh, but I think that's about it, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching this episode i hope you had fun with the the em smart experience we're gonna move this right against the wall back there we'll get the exhaust hooked up we can start doing weird stuff like leather things like that uh, i don't have an affiliate code yet but like i said they should be on the marketplace soon or you can check out their website it's 3plasers.com just go straight to them if you really want to help out the channel just let them know that uh alex sent you from laser everything um, I'm sure that'll go a long way with getting some more of their equipment in here so we can play with even more of their lasers and things like that. Uh, you have a happy Easter too, Andy. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks, Louie. <laughs> Glad you happened upon this. Go back and check it out from the beginning. We put the whole thing together. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, they posted, I think the code was Alex. Uh, that may have worked. Uh, I didn't test it out because it was the first I was hearing about it. Um, but we'll do another video. I'll probably do like a review video that's like edited and published with my thoughts a little more organized um, and some nice camera work. <laughs> Even though that Hello World is like permanently etched into the machine now, so I've already messed it up. But, um, you know, it's what it is. All right, guys, I'm going to run. It's getting super late. Uh, I'm exhausted, but thank you again for uh, for hanging out with me one last time. Um, seriously, I really, really appreciate you guys. Don't forget to smash the like button. And, uh, of course, I will see you in the next one. Have a great night. See you later.